Every day, Scotland's fishermen head out to sea, hunting the fish that go on your dinner plate. Quite a few fish suppers there, I would say. Look at that. Spend all week looking for that. Whoa, much already. Risking their lives in Britain's most dangerous occupation. Oh, no, 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 no. We've now got a Sowie's gale up on us. For these fishermen, every haul is a gamble. No, no, really bad haul. That's a beauty. Woo! Few little dance. Coming home to land their catch at one of Europe's biggest fishing ports, Peterhead. Here, the competition is fierce. 120, 120, 130, 135. No, good deal. So will they strike it big or return empty-handed? Peterhead's neighbouring port, Fraserburgh, is home to one of Scotland's most experienced fishermen, Davy Milne. 40 years I've been doing this. It's a long time to be doing anything. Love it or hate it, I suppose, sometimes. It's a great thrill to get in. You feel like a hunter, I suppose. Davy's heading 150 miles east into Norwegian waters, searching for high-valued whitefish like cod and haddock. He's sailing his state-of-the-art boat, the Faithly. It's a bit of like golf. You're only as good as your last round, and you're only as good as your last trip. You're there to make a living. Your crew needs to get a pay, and along with new boats comes a great big long bank one. <laughs> then you, you get the pressures of having to meet the commitments to the bank. That's the main driver. On the Alska, skipper Ian Harkis is also hunting whitefish, but he's fishing west of Orkney. Cod's very expensive just now, and we could really do with some expensive fish. Cod's a funny thing. They can be in abundance one day and, and just disappear the next day. It's not just a case of going and finding any fish. You really need to try and catch fish that's quality, that's good, not too thin, get a good price. Nice if you can beat everybody else as well at the same time. Compared to the Faithly, the 22-year-old Alskers are a relic. When you get a boat this age, all the profits goes away into repairs and um, you still end up with an old boat, you know. You can't let things run down and have breakages at sea and stuff. Working on an old boat adds extra labour for crew, like Liam. Built for taking a bit of a battering and that. I would say it's hard work, yeah. It's a lot of kind of manual handling and stuff, and it's kind of like an obstacle course, stuff to climb over, and it's just, yeah, it's a bit tricky. It's not just where you hunt the fish that can make or break your trip, but how you catch them. The Faithley is fishing in a traditional style called Scottish Seam. You're making a big triangle or a shape of a house. Your ropes is bouncing in the water and you're herding the fish into the net. And it's the last part before your ropes almost comes together that the fish actually enters the net. That's why they're, they, you, we didn't get a lot of damaged fish. The fish is it's in pristine condition. I don't know if it's such a thing as eco-friendly, but uh, theoretically it's a lot lighter gear anyway. So it would be doing less damage to the seabed, definitely. Davy's fished like this for years, but he's taking a gamble this trip, using a newly designed net. It's always a challenge that you're wanting to catch higher volume fish. Again, sea net traditionally was always haddocks and white and, and, and cod, and uh, it's mainly to target the higher volume fish, that net. That's the normal shape, and that you would have floats on here like this. And the shape of this net is completely different. It's shape it more like that. So you've got two fish in circles, one here and one here. But it's still the same basic shape it ends up. 
It ends up into the shape. It's called a double bosom knit. It reminds you a lot of things when you're doing it, but uh, that's the name of it. This was the first go of our new knit today, so here's hoping. Hopefully we can catch some more monkfish and uh, some more expensive flatfish, lemon soles and things like that. The Alsker is trawling waters off the north coast of Scotland in an area Ian's fished before. There's space for 1,500 boxes of fish on board, but it's not enough just to fill them. Ian needs the best quality if he wants to get a good price in the market. That's the fish we've been in this area this year, so the quality wasn't that good last year, but I hope they, they would grow a bit. I don't think the size of headache is as good as I would like to see. They look a bit small. From a small headache, a bigger headache can probably twice the price per kilo. So you, we're always trying to get bigger fish. The crew are responsible for the work on board, but they're all looking to Ian to find the fish. Deccan Liam has been in the Olska for 13 years. Ian will be, uh, he'll be doing a lot of head scratching and a lot of thinking and forward planning. There's a lot of pressure on him, definitely, to find fish, fill boxes and get the men paid, so... A tough job for him up there, that's for sure. Ian's pretty good, too. He keeps pretty cool in that, and um, we don't see him stressed a lot. My dad actually sailed with him when uh, he was at the fishing. I have a long family history in the fishing industry. It'll be myself, my dad, my granddad, and then his dad. It makes me proud, yeah, that I've kind of carried it on a bit. Back on the Faithly, it's time to find out if the experiment with the new nets has paid off. You're just weighing and apprehensive. I see some birds floating here, so there is something. They are vast, but there's something there anyway. A lot of people said it wouldn't have worked, so we're halfway to proving them wrong. <laughs> Getting to grips with the new gear, a long-serving fisherman, Richard and Jakey. I've been with Davy now for, uh, I think it's, I think it's five years. I think Jakey's been a lot longer. How long have you been, Jakey? 12 years. 12 years, Jakey. Roughly. The crew's been with us a long time. No other way is I want things done, and then everyone gets into their, their way of doing things. I was Jakey's best man at his wedding. We've been friends a lot, a lot of years, from school days, Ken. You could do a wee bit more fishing that like. It's early stages, it, you know, it's... Uh, but it seems to be working all right. He's getting the flats, he's getting the monks. New technology is making life at sea easier on board the Faithly. And Davy's hoping this will attract new recruits. Fishing's a really highly skilled job. And uh, it, before, when we were younger, it was really, really hard work. That day is gone now and it's far safer, it's far cleaner. It's a great industry to be involved in. It's really important that we encourage the young guys to come and work in the industry or we're not going to have an industry in the future. In Peterhead, a new training scheme is underway, giving people the skills to get a job in the fishing industry, led by Gordon Gibb. What we're trying to highlight within this one is to try and get everybody to know that it's not just the fishing boats. When it gets landed, we've got the fish market, then there's all the processing. And what we show today is an industry to be proud of. These students have all come from local high schools. Some of them have never even eaten fish. Gordon has his work cut out getting them up to speed. Now, I want you to smell it. If it's a smell -o. fish, it smells in the sea, OK? When you pack a fish, they've got to look right. If I'm buying fish, I look at the main things. So, one, you look at the eye. 
OK? Make sure it's nice and bright, it's concave, it's nice sunk in, and the gills have got to be bright red, like that. So it's a really nice, fresh fish. OK? After a brief introduction, it's into the classroom for some hands-on experience. Once I get finished with them, they will be fish convert. Back in Norwegian waters, the Facely is getting big rewards with the new net, catching high-priced flatfish. It's not only the nets that are new. Davy launched the Faithly in 2017. It's his third boat in a career spanning 40 years, where he's seen many highs and lows. The old boat, the Doran. That was called the Morning Dawn. Bought her in January 92, and she sunk in uh, 4th of November 94. So we didn't hear how long that went. Like, it was a really bad night when that happened. It was a wild, wild night because it was about first nine. And uh, I was actually off that trip. I was, it was my trip off. I was the one the Coast Guards contacted me for to say the, the boat was in trouble. It happened so fast. And once a vessel starts taking water in a compartment for it, it doesn't normally take it. The water rental the vessel lasts pretty quick then you're basically, you have to get off. To jump in a life raft in a Force 9, you have to be brave. It's, you have to be, you have to want to save your life, basically. So the hell, a lot of them was in a raft, and uh, they were taken out of a raft with a helicopter, and uh, the boat sunk not long after they were taken off a boat, so. It, it, these are the things it brings back to mind, that how dangerous a job is, and how the circumstances change so fast. I mean, that boat just sprang a leak, but within minutes, the boat was sunk. And at the end of the day, I was near life lost, and that was a good thing about it. Deckhand Jakey's also been a fisherman for 40 years, starting on wooden boats where everything was done by hand. This boat's a palace. It's a massive change, hey, I think it was years ago. Really massive change. If I was doing what I was doing 40 years ago, I didn't think I would manage. Now it's so, so much easier. Everything's net drums, winches, automatic fish handling systems. Everything makes it easy. I, I probably couldn't do it. I have to I go ashore, but with a ship like this, everything is so much easier. Fish and chips today. For Liam on the Olska, Life on an old boat is starting to take its toll. It's not a job that you would, like, that I'm wanting to do for the rest of my life. I'd be going till I'm 40, mid-40s or something like that, and just take it a bit easier then, try a easier job ashore or something, but uh, just do this kind of while you're young and fit, so... It's not a glamorous job at all, so... Every time you see a young face coming on board, you know, it's nice to see that folks still do want to come to it, and that they're not frightened of a bit of hard graft and getting their hands dirty, so, uh, it's good. 20-odd more fillets of fish there to cook, so it will take a minute. On shore in Peterhead, five teenagers are being taught basic fish filleting skills by Gordon Gibb. The overall aim for the course is about de developing the whole workforce. So we don't just look at one specific area within the fish industry, we look at all areas. Let them see what there is out there and hopefully encourage them. So I'm going to do is put heat off. That's simple. Oh, my God. Abdi's face is going, oh, God, I do you do that. Fish filleting is a vital skill in the industry. Do you want to hear a competition to see if we can meet my heel? So on you go. So it's time for students Donnie and Robert to have a go. They have to show they can do a good job if they're going to pass the course. You start her off really good, and you've got Mr. Bailey on here, so we'll need to turn off the belly. So it's not too bad. Good start. For marks to attain, for first attempts, seven. 
So, well done for you. Good. See? And you can't do it. Up next for these young recruits is learning to cook the fish. What the state you're in? <laughs> a skill that will come in handy living in the UK's busiest fishing port. Cheers. I might have spilled a bit. A bit? George! Just lay them in. Get some white there. Fifteen year old Josh has aspirations to become a chef. Following in his brother's footsteps, who works at a local restaurant, Peterhead Palace. My brother worked at Palace. The Palace? The Palace. I get Palace in London. No, Peterhead Palace. I thought you'd get a Palace in London. What's not Palace, but. I thought you mean like he cooks for the Queen. No. Cooking done, it's time for the taste test. Oh, it was alright. It was alright. good. It was alright. Oh. You cooked it. <laughs> Not you, me, you cooked it. <laughs> for these young boys, their introduction to the fishing industry is over and they can progress on to further training. And for Gordon, he's got at least one success story. The problem I've got with you in the boats is you don't like fish. I, no, I, I kind of do. You kind of like fish now. See, I, that to me is a miracle. I've changed you, I've converted you. <laughs> Good. On you go. Go and have your lunch. Thank you. You're welcome. The time worn Alsker has been fishing off the west coast of Orkney for five days and hasn't found the catch it set out for. To boost the profit of this trip, Skipper Ian must find high priced fish. Bad. Best daylight we're seeing. Below deck, Ian gets a closer look at the catch. This is a mixture of whitings and haddock, which is okay. But it'd still be nice to see some cod. The fish are fat, so it makes them look bigger than what they are, really. Uh, they're in good condition. And uh, it's a viable haul. If I can get a few more hauls of this type of stuff, we might go looking for cod. With a profitable haul, the Alskar is straight back to it. But there's a problem, putting Liam and the rest of the crew on high alert. We're in our bed sleeping and there's a, an awful noise of crashes and hissing. There's no power going to the boat's winches. A vital piece of kit. It'd be a million and one thing, so the engineers are down just now having a look to see what's going on. Fisherman and engineer Colin has spotted the boats low on oil, causing a power cut. We lost a bit of oil and all the rest, but it could have been a lot worse. That's why you need to like maintain your pipes and stuff like that. After a quick top up of oil, Colin has got the winches working again, and the Olska can fish on. So we managed to haul the gear up, so that was fine, because that would have been a disaster if we couldn't get the gear back on board, but luckily we got away with it. This wasn't a one-off incident. The boat needs constant repair, so Ian's finally taking the plunge and buying a replacement. That's the plans. The boat is slightly longer and uh, it's quite a bit wider, which will give us a lot more comfort. The big difference is from this boat is that we'll be able to carry five nets. Here we just carry two, so we should be able to fish stronger with this boat. I expect around about 7.5 million for the new boat. And we would be doing really well if we could get 500,000 pounds for this boat. So it's, it's at least a seven million pound difference. It's not that I've set aside for the last four years, I've set aside for 20 years for this. So it's a long term project. After a successful few days with the new nets on the Faithley, Davy can set sail for the market. Our new nets have been working pretty well. We've got well, 700 boxes for our. Uh for three days, so that's good. In Davy's years at sea, 
he's seen many changes in the industry, even down to steering the boat. When I started 40 years ago with a wheel, and you had to crank the wheel, and basically now it's the wheel, this little joystick here. The modern fleet nowadays, you can shower very near every day and change your clothes and everything, but when we started, I mean, there wasn't such a thing as a toilet. You had maybe a door with a little cupboard, and uh, there used to be like a bench with the shape, shape of your bum, and that's where you did the toilet. So vessels and fishing boats in general has come a long way. Ian's also focusing on prices at the market, so he's changed tactics in search of cod, a high price catch. We could do it with a little adrenaline rush to send us home, but the adrenaline's been pretty dormant this week. Hit on the good markets, a big plus. That's where it's decided what you're going to get uh, paid. Once we got quite a bit of fish on board, uh, I really wanted to get some cod because if it's a mix, um, you can afford maybe one thing to be quite cheap and something else will pull it off. But the net seems to be empty. Time to haul up and work out why. I'm not seeing a lot of indications in the fish finders, but I was hoping to get some cod because we don't have oh, much cod. Gosh, it doesn't look just too hopeful. The net's torn and the catch has to be emptied onto the deck. Repairing the net will take the crew hours. I took a gamble tonight. I could have just plodded on what we were catching, and that would have been OK, but I just thought we'll, we'll just take a chance to see if we can get a boost to finish on. On the Faithly, fish sorting's much more straightforward for veteran Jakey as he preps the catch for market. It's really, really important that everything is kept in pristine condition. You just throw them in the box, the fish wires would pay you the money. The prices last trip from this size of haddock was £4 a kilo. So every fish, £2. Good quality. Some ships maybe only get £1 a kilo. The fish is even better condition because they're only three days old. So it's really good. Davy's very smart. He sees the prices go up, boom, in we go. And hopefully <laughs> we catch a market. 200 million pounds worth of fish were landed into Peterhead last year. In order for boats to maximize profits and compete in this busy market, their fish must be the highest quality. It's great to go through the effort of catching them, but it's, uh, to me, this is what it's all about. This is your pay and it's how you present it, really. It's getting the maximum return out of our quota. Again. So it's up to the salesman calling tomorrow to see how good a price you can get. Helping Davy is a graduate from the training school. This is Donia, a nephew of mine. This is the future. He's not sure if he wants to be a fisherman or not. So, time will tell. Are you thinking about it, fisherman or no fisherman? Okay. <laughs> Donia, you've been involved in with the Marine College. He's going to make a career out of the fishing, so he'll be coming aboard the boat. So, there's always a family connection up to now. And, Hopefully it continues. The catch from the Olska is also sold at Peterhead Market. Arriving under the shadow of fog, Ian must safely manoeuvre the boat into the busy harbour. There's not much room here to come through. Look at this small boat coming here now. Just no idea what he's thinking to do, but... We have to assume he will move for us. The fish will be offloaded to market to sell the next morning. For Ian, he can finally head home. Once the last box is out, it's nice then. And it's even better when you get showered and ready to go home. That's when it gets really good. 
The price of the fish at market can make or break a trip for skippers like Ian and Davy. Selling their catch is Colin Graham from the Don Fishing Company. Hopefully the lads will be they'll be pleased with their return today. First up is the Alskers catch. Ian landed a mix of high and low valued fish, so the success of the trip hangs in the balance. 126 last time. The Alskers fish is sold, but what's Colin's verdict? Price has been good, uh, demand fairly good. Certainly on a haddock, not so much on a whiting. Three pounds sixty per kilo on the haddocks. So yeah, it's worked well. Ian's a fisherman, none of a hobby. He'll, he'll be content and he won't show it. When it comes to the sale of the Faithly catch, Davy has come to oversee the auction. One twenty for the choice. We're done. Even still to this day, I'll still go along the market and look at other people's fish and see if there's something we can learn for someone else. And to me, in this industry, every day is a school day. Even though Davy caught a lot of fish in the new net, he still needs a good price to boost his profits. Most of your buyers on this market will buy by the reputation of the boat. So the Faithly is one in particular. Senior quality fish and the guys are always looking out for them. Okay, lads, here we go, pick a bit. 20 seconds. Go, he's got two. Table. Two. The four. Four. The six. One, 20 for a choice. We're done. It's good money at auction for the Faithly catch, and the fish buyers are happy as well. Best fish on the market by a country mile. Yeah, Represented yeah. like soldiers in the boxes. Yeah. But a fisherman can never make enough money. Yeah, lads, have a new Colin's doing his, he's doing his best. Still a little room for improvement a little bit, I think, like, but... Sli slipping back a bit now. I'll buy him for 40 pounds. I can make, I can pay. Yeah, it's been a worthwhile trip. We've got a new net set up. We've got a big price, so job done, really. It's great. People think, so oh, you've made 100,000, you're going away home with 100,000. But once you really break it down, the vessel's fuel and costs are running and your levies and uh, everything comes off. There's a margin left which is going to be shared between the vessel and the crew. And it's, it's nothing like 100,000, more, more's the pity. Next time, the sardonics get stuck in the Murray Firth. Whoop! Whoop! Stop the starboard, he's a fort. Nice, she's still stopped.